Hello guys, gals, non-binary pals, this is Cruelty64, and today I've got a brand new series I'm hoping to bring to you all. And that series is we are going to start a Let's Play of Fallout New Vegas, in case the title didn't clue that out. Now, this game, I admit my experience with the Fallout franchise at this point is a little limited. I've played this game, I've played a bit of Fallout 4, and I've played a bit of Fallout 1. But a couple friends of mine convinced me to get into this game, and I am a huge fan of it. And we are going to be playing with a Switch Pro Controller, going through the game, just kind of having some fun, seeing what goes on, hopefully. So, if you like what you see, give me a like, comment, subscribe, yada yada, you know, YouTube business, whatever. But for anyone unfamiliar, we're going to get this started up and get going. But the Fallout franchise is a, I'm going to say post-post-apocalyptic video game series where in an alternate history, the, uh, the Cold War basically got real hot and in this case, China and the U.S. were getting into more and more active, like, skirmishes across the globe until everyone just got nuked and died. And there are some people who survived by going in these underground shelters called vaults. But we'll get into some of the stuff there eventually when we find some. But also, like, some people did survive. Some people got turned into these irradiated zombie types called ghouls. Some other things have happened since then that we will get into as more, you know, of the game progresses. Because Fallout New Vegas is the, it was the fourth, like, mainline Fallout game, as it were, despite the title. Right now, this is a cutscene just kind of showcasing some of the factions we're going to get to know as the, fr as the game goes on. But the reason I call it post-post-apocalyptic is because the world's changed a lot since the bombs dropped. It's not just the world's ended, what do we do? You're living in a society that's dealing with the after effects of after the, after the bombs dropped. And it's very interesting to see the kind of changes the Fallout universe will, will say that humanity has gone through. And the, the line you're going to hear in any Fallout game is war, war never changes. There's more to it than that that we'll get into, but the core concept is even hundreds of years after the bombs dropped, people are still getting into conflicts and unable to, you know, really peacefully cooperate and they'll fight over lots of different things. In this game, there's a lot of ideological differences that put the different factions in opposition with each other, but... What this cutscene is explaining is the New California Republic, who was like the group trying to reestablish pre-war America. They found the remains of Hoover Dam along with the new Ve with the Vegas Strip, and they got attacked from a faction across the, er I believe, across the Colorado, called Caesar's Legion, with their flag being that bull. The New California Republic's flag is the two-headed bear. And they both fought over Hoover Dam, I believe... I don't know how many years ago. I think it was like 20, maybe less, maybe more. But they fought, and the NCR barely won. But now Caesar's Legion is building their strength. But meanwhile, this whole time, the Vegas Strip is still in business, protected by its robotic Securitrons and the mysterious overlord, Mr. Robert House. And we are playing a courier who is sent to deliver a specific package, but it isn't exactly going to go as planned. So, let's find out how it's not going to go as planned. Also, this is the PC version of the Ultimate Edition, so I am going to be going through all of the DLC, hopefully. That's part of why I've got the thumbnail for this video that I do. I wish I could have the audio, but 
I'm not really great at balancing the game audio versus my audio at this point. But normally right now you'd be hearing Matthew Perry in his smooth-talking voice in that checkered suit talking about how we made our last delivery and how he's going to kill us. I have, Just look up the monologue on YouTube. It's really good. That character and the people next to him are pretty dang compelling, in my opinion. The game was rigged from the start. Also, it's baffling that what happens next, given the actual stats of that pistol. Major props to Obsidian Entertainment for how well they did with this game. A phrase I am sure they've heard dozens of times because Fallout New Vegas fans, myself included, don't shut up about this game. We'll be stopping by that H&H &H tool company eventually. So right now, all of the DLC items are being like added to our inventory right away, despite the lack of stats or character name or anything like that. That's just kind of the goofiness of buying like an Ultimate Edition at this point in time. And let's find out who this gentleman is in a bit. But as far as our name, our name is not Courier. Our name is going to be Wes. It's a Pokemon Coliseum reference. Shocker, still a Pokemon fan. The th one of the other things I never shut up about. And this is Doc Mitchell, but Wes being a Pokemon Coliseum reference is because Pokemon Coliseum takes place in a Mojave-esque location. I believe it's actually based on Arizona, just like this game is. So now we're going to get into our character customization. I will be... I'll just stick with the Caucasian. Hmm. And I'm going to be a bit, of a bit on the older side. I'll go with the hmm that shaggy suave does not look good considering the build I'm going with actually I kind of like that one reminds me of a bit of Kurt Russell and whatever that is let's go with it okay that's going to be me why not now, there's some very important things we're going to do in Doc Mitchell's house, and there's some very important things that are in Doc Mitchell's house. Also, apologies if that visual effect caused you any problems. I also got to remember the controls. It's been a hot minute since I've played this game. So you say, okay, so this is how I'm getting into third person view. I'll take that doctor's bag. I'm likely going to need it. Uh, let's get that copy of today's physician. I don't, I don't think I need the reading glasses. Yeah, I'm going to say no to the reading glasses, all things considered. Definitely going to need stim pack, anti-venom, all this stuff. The ammo has no weight, so that's why I'm taking it. And... Nothing else I'm really going to grab yet. Yes, I did indeed walk over to the Vigor Tester. Now this is where we're going to choose our stats. And for this build, I'm going to be going for a melee weapons build. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to drain all of the stats that I don't want very high. Perception, I don't like having high perception. means you have too many enemy markers on your, on your uh, map. Drop my, gonna drop my charisma because it's not super important in my opinion, and I don't really care about my agility stat as well. So the most important stats in any Fallout run, in my opinion, gonna be intelligence because it increases the amount of skill points you get per level up. Endurance in this game because your endurance stat changes your ability to get these special. Uh, 
uh, implants that can increase your other stats. So I think I'll go with, right now I'll go with an 8 for strength. If I can, I'll afford 9, but I definitely need to put some effort into luck, or at least I'd like to. Maybe I can drain one more from some of the other ones. Hmm. I think I'll keep my charisma at two. Maybe I'll drain one. Nah, this will be fine. I say before we find out later that it's probably a huge mistake. Oh well. So, eight in strength, two in perception, nine in endurance, two in charisma, nine in intelligence, two in agility, and eight in luck. I think that'll be okay. Maybe them bullets have done your brain some good. Yeah, so uh, that last thing that happened in the cutscene before the game started was us getting shot in the head over that package. And now we're going to take a psych exam. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. Feed the dog. Renovate the house. Dream at night. Stab the bandit. Night torch, I guess. Disagree. I uh, guess no opinion there. I guess I do tend to. Most of this Psyche Val stuff doesn't matter, but it is kind of cool that it's a thing in the game. Still two bears high-fiving, though. I'm always going to reference that. Alright, so as far as tagged skills go, this is the skills we're going to make sure are very high right off the bat. Melee weapons for my melee weapons build. Speech. And the last one's going to be science. Which I'm going to need later. A lot. Well, thanks, Doc. Get a sense of your medical history. Doc Mitchell's got a... He's a great character, and he's got a great voice, too. The voice acting in this game is generally off the wall. And I feel like I say that word too often. The word generally. So, obviously, if you don't pick Wild Wasteland in your Fallout New Vegas runs, it's either your first time playing or you're boring. Or maybe, I guess, you want the Gauss Rifle or whatever... Who cares? You're boring. Pick Wild Wasteland. Um, I'm going to go with... Can I even take this? Yeah, I guess I'll go with... Uh, melee and unarmed attacks do more damage, but less critically hit damage. Now, your traits are all optional. I don't have to take any of these. But, I think they're cool and useful. They have interesting benefits and drawbacks. I kind of want to take Hoarder, because that is how I tend to play this game. And I've never done it before. Hmm. Nah, I'd rather just go Hot-Blooded. It's the safer option. Thanks, Doc. You mind if I take all your stuff? Baseball, baseball glove. Now, I've played this game enough times to have a general idea of how I like to approach the, you know, different sections of the game. So, one thing to note is everything in Doc Mitchell's house is not set to own, so you can steal it. And I need it more than he does. So, sorry, Doc. I'll grab this knife. I usually don't, but just in case. Carton of cigarettes. But the reason I mention that is... In my opinion, early game, anything that is worth like 40 caps or more... Or anything that has no weight... Is something I'm going to take so I can sell. So let's go into Doc's kitchen... Also, I'd love to check my repair stats, see if I can fix up the broken submachine gun that's in here. But, I didn't double check. 
So, my bad. But there is a carton of cigarettes. We're actually going to take all the cigarettes we can for something later. Much, much, much later. Hmm. And there's some caps here. Caps are the currency in the Fallout universe. Has replaced pre-war money. It has. Now, with my high science skill, I can actually make some stim packs or some drugs. And I'll take the stim packs, please. Dang it, my repair stat's not high enough. But I'll need that Sunset Sarsaparilla there. Hey, Doc. Thanks for patching me up. And no, I'm not doing hardcore mode. Never have, and I won't. So what is my repair stat at? Ah, oh, it's one short. Crap. Alright, so as far as... We're gonna equip the... I'm gonna say the broad machete for now. And as far as apparel goes... You know what? I usually don't wear the lightweight metal armor early game, because of the drop to agility. But my agility is already low enough anyway. Doesn't really matter. Alright, let's do this. Ah! Blinding. Blinded by the light. It's telling me right now about all the DLC that we can... We can do the DLC right away. What's this? It's a robot. And a mailbox that's empty. This robot cowboy is actually the one who dug me out of my grave. Happy trails. I could kill him, but I'm not going to. I love Victor. Sadly, we're going to have to kill him later, but not now. Uh, hmm. Where should I go first? Have fun finding a video game where I don't end up just jumping around everywhere. Uh, the freaking Sierra Madre. All I want to do is let go. Who detects me? Is it Victor? It's probably Victor. There we go. So we are going to make a quick save because I'm about to steal some things. My desire for Sunset Sarsaparilla is never satiated. And karma basically doesn't matter in this game. Apparently it matters more in Fallout 3. But this is not Fallout 3. It's just heavily based on Fallout 3. Oh, I could use that banana yucca. I gotta keep it, keep it in mind for later. Alright. More Sunset Sarsaparilla. Now the first thing we're gonna do... We got told to uh, check out Sunny Smiles. She was going to help us out with a couple things. But first I'm going to go to the general, general store here and talk to Chet. Show me what you got for sale. Because I need money. I'll sell you most of my stuff, honestly. Oh yeah, casual grenade rifle we got thanks to the, thanks to the DLC. I appreciate it to say the least. And there's some pretty dang good other items that we got thanks to that. Gonna keep that Vault 21 jumpsuit. It's useful for a quest later. Uh, is there any... Okay, I'm gonna need the shovel. I know that. It's got a recharger rifle? That'd be useful if I was doing an energy weapons run. Hmm. I'm gonna need this. So I guess I'll get it now. At least I'm going to need it later. Um, hmm. Anything else I can sell or want to sell? Let's get rid of the weathered 10 millimeter. Bad idea. Time to restart the whole transaction. My bad. What did I just click? Apparently I have butterfingers, so apologies if this is getting repetitive. 
So I'll sell this and that and I wanted to sell the weather 10 millimeter, but I can't buy the shovel and copy a salesman weekly. Alright, that gives me about 350 caps. He's got enough to buy my shotgun, but not enough to buy the pistol. Bummer. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to head over to Sunny Smiles, who is hanging out in the Prospector Saloon, along with Best Boy Easy Pete. There she is. Need to get a prim. A little short on caps. And let's start this tutorial stuff. After I finish this tutorial business, that's probably going to be the end of the episode. Not sure how long each episode's going to run. I tend to get absorbed into this game in a way that I don't as much with some other games that I'll be streaming. In part because while I'm playing this right now, I can't see how long the episode's gone on unless I were to pause and go out. Which, you know, two zoned in. Man. Alright, so she just gave me a rifle. Too bad my guns and agility skills are not good. Also, I'm just generally not great at shooters. A friend of mine made a joke how I, I've done like five playthroughs of this game. But, I, uh... Most of the time, I will do anything other than guns, as proven by the fact that I'm using melee weapons here. And he was like, you will do anything to avoid avoid a standard guns playthrough. And I was like, yeah, pretty much. Energy weapons, unarmed, melee weapons, explosives. Man, I wish Joe Cobb was here already. I'd shoot him right now. So right now we're going with Sunny Smiles and her dog Cheyenne to take care of some geckos. The These geckos are not very threatening as opposed to your adult grown fire geckos which are absolutely terrifying although they're far from the most terrifying creature in the Mojave. By the way, always a fun word to say. Let's just rush into this head on. We've got good armor. Not Obviously not the best armor. I'll be excited when we get power armor to say the least. Yeah game, you're telling me to enter vast, but I'm just going to cut these things down. I say as I miss. Yeah, those are like young, not very strong tutorial geckos. I don't know why, I just like, I tend to like the third person camera in general when it comes to exploring. Combat's a little bit of a different story. Let's see if we can find these geckos. Sliced off his leg, and one more spot. God, I hope we didn't screw this up. Hope I didn't, at least. Come on. Please tell me. Hey, you get away. And this is VATS, which lets you go into slow-mo, pretty much. And we just saved that lady, which is what I was worried about. Because we, if you save that lady, then you get a town reputation bonus of sorts. The thing she's teaching me is absolutely a thing I've never taken advantage of in this game, which is the survival system and, like, crafting. I used it a little bit in my explosives playthrough, but 
There's enough beds and everything in standard mode. You alright, Cheyenne? She's a good puppy. There's actually a way for Cheyenne to die during the during this tutorial and Sunny Smiles has unique dialogue. Never seen it personally. <laughs> Why would you want the puppy to die? Oh yeah, none of the enemies we're going to be fighting, obviously, this early game are going to pose any kind of challenge. Let's fight a bunch of baby mantises. Which are only annoying because of their tiny hitbox, and only kind of. But, I'll take this weapon repair kit. There's an ammo box here. Now you might be thinking, hey, Cruelty, why are you picking up a bunch of ammo when you're not going to be using guns? And the answer is I can sell it. Always got to be thinking ahead. God, I wish there was a stealth boy in here. I mean, I know there is one later. Two later, actually. So, uh, Sunny Smiles, the survival stuff that I just mentioned I mostly ignore, and she's trying to teach us. She requires some Brock flour and some Xander root. Now, the Xander root is right there. But, let's head inside this schoolhouse and clear out all of the mantises. Giant Mantis Nymph. To be more accurate, I suppose. Okay, so this copy of Programmer's Digest. Some bobby pins. The game is teaching you through some, like, game design, obviously, that you can hack this terminal, or you can just straightforwardly pick the lock. Both of them will be functional methods to get into that safe. Alright, so... It's gonna have... I Most likely, the password has an ING. Let's try... Nope. How about... <laughs> Fallout's one of the options. It's not warning. H-O-L-D-I-N-G. Nope. T-A-L. Talking? Alright. Talking was closest. And... L-A-N... So it's not landing. Uh... Hmm... I'm almost positive it's whatever this is. Okay, good. I was about to get locked out of that that computer. That would have been a bummer. All right. So now we can get into the safe, see what goodies are inside. And there's a lot. Stealth Boy, Sunset Sarsaparilla, Super Stimpak, some alcohol that I don't take because I don't really need it. Standard mode, this game isn't... This game can get hard, but it's not as hard as I'm sure you would need it in, like, hardcore mode or if you were playing on generally lower levels. Again, with that use of the word. All right. So, schoolhouse is basically cleared out at this point. Now, there are a few things I'm specifically looking for, just as I go around here. I really want a copy of... What's it called? Uh, uh, Patriot's, Patriot's Cookbook, which is a skill magazine, which gives a temporary boost to your explosive skill. I really want it for stuff later. But it's kind of a random spawn. So. Alright. I'll take that. It's Explosives isn't even a skill I'm going to be putting much effort into for a long time. But. I do need it. In some fashion. Specifically for the. 
the quest we're going to get at the end of this tutorial, which I won't be starting this episode. Or for a while. I'm going to skip that quest so I can do a different one. Copy of Locksmith Reader, some cherry bombs that apparently don't weigh anything. Alright. There's a lot of, like, busted out and non-usable houses around here. Oh, did I skip the scorpion? Where's the bark scorpion? There it is. Also, if you use your charge attacks... You get a different attack. You can also learn some new, like, melee techniques, kind of, from different factions. It's pretty cool. Oh, great, the bloat flies. Let's, uh, let's actually switch over to my shotgun. What are my chances? They're low. Can't believe I'm using a shotgun on what is probably the weakest enemies in the game. But, they're flying, and they're annoying, so... Also, they're gross. They're just gross. Ah, uh, okay. I probably just missed. Wow, that is doing no damage weird. Baffling. Like, this thing should be dead at this point. Is it running away? Ugh, whatever. I mean, I know there's like a, there's a system where you can scare off enemies, as it were. I didn't even know it was that common with wild animals as it were. So this is actually our grave. The grave we got dug out of. And if you look carefully, somewhere around here... Okay, first off, there's the Brock flower we need, but also these distinctive cigarette butts. Oh, and also, since so there's all these graves, we can use a shovel to open them and take some stuff out. Be a good old-fashioned grave robber. Also, I'm not looting any of the enemy corpses because none of them have anything useful. We haven't exactly fought anything really tough yet. Not exactly marching into Deathclaw territory right now. Wait, why does it say there's an enemy nearby? Oh well. Alright, so we're going to switch back to the machete and fast travel to Good Springs Source. As opposed to Good Springs DOS Box. Props if you're like the one person I know that'll get that reference, maybe. Alright, so we activate the campfire, sacrifice that block... Yeah, Brock Flower and Xander Root. And now the last part of this quest, other than me checking out this... What is this, like an RV trailer or something? Nothing in the suitcase, some empty bottles, there's a bed there. But we're going to head to Good Springs and we're going to meet the owner of the Prospector Saloon, who is not Easy Pete. Her name is Trudy. And she's dealing with a fun customer named Joe Cobb. I'd love to kill Joe Cobb now, but I need to betray him later. Overheard your argument. <laughs> Want to talk about something else? Try and track down the people that attacked me.
soon. Promise. And now, thanks to our reputation in town, we actually get a discount. Which is nice. Could have gotten that cheaper copy of Salesman Weekly. But right now I will sell you this revolver and the varmint rifle. And I should have some other stuff I can get rid of. Like this pre-war money. And it's probably going to be it, honestly. Yeah, she doesn't have enough caps for me to sell any of my other stuff. But I'll take it. And now we just leveled up. And I'm going to assign my skill points in a bit of a weird fashion first off. Because I'm going to get my explosive skill to 15. My barter to 15. And my speech to 30. Then I'm going to take the swift learner perk. Because that'll increase the amount of experience I get from doing stuff. And I just realized I forgot to increase my repair. Uh, should I go back? Hmm. Nah, I don't have enough anyway. Alright, so this will be the last thing we actually do this episode. Which is take this skill magazine. Fix the radio. Talk to Trudy again to get some caps for it. And we're actually going to run back to Doc Mitchell. Oh, I just ran into Joe Cobb. He was the one yelling at me there. I was like, what, did Easy Pete get mad at me for something? Alright, I need to do this before that skill magazine runs out. And I'm actually going to now need another copy of Fixing Things so I can repair Edie later. At least repair him faster. Come on, it's around here. Hey, Doc. And I'll take it. Alright, so that is going to be the end of this episode. So hopefully y'all had a nice time. And I will also hopefully see you in the next episode. So like I said, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and all that business. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.